The story is in the news everywhere. Men in the United States are dying earlier now than any time in the last 27 years. Men's life expectancy is 73 and a half years compared to women's 79.3 years. An upward trend from 2010 to the pandemic has created a gap between men and women of 5.8 years, the largest since 1996. Men die at higher age adjusted mortality rates than women in all causes except one, and that's Alzheimer's disease. So what can be done? Hello, I'm Isaac Way, and I'm here to discuss what the hell is happening. And I'm going to provide some tips that anyone can start using today to improve their health and lower their likelihood of contributing to the future decline of our life expectancy. I have the studies referenced in the links below for those interested in reading more. According to this research letter, widening gender gap in life expectancy in the U.S. 2010 to 2021, the U.S. life expectancy has continued to drop from 78.8 in 2019 to 77 in 2020, and now 76.1 years in 2021 with the latest data. The pandemic, which took a disproportional toll on men, was the biggest contributor to the widening gap from 2019 to 2021, followed by unintentional injuries and poisonings, which are mostly drug overdoses, accidents, and suicide. We were largely not looking at sudden deaths related to motor vehicles and falls, the latter of which can be significantly reduced with strength training. Instead, we're looking at the slow death most people will experience. As we age and become more sedentary, our bodies are naturally predisposed to succumb to more illness and injury, leading to pre-existing conditions and comorbidities. These are mentally and physically stressing wearing away at us over time and increasing our risk of future ailments and mortality. In short, health span, which is the quality of our lives and lifespan, how long we live, are both being sapped away. Let's address the pandemic deaths briefly first. The best thing any of us can do to counter infectious diseases is to be physically fit. Looking at this study, physical activity lowers the risk for acute respiratory infections. This chart with infectious disease shows the percentage reduction in physically active compared to inactive adults. These are significant reductions in mortality rate. Low levels of cardiorespiratory fitness are associated with the highest risk of long-term mortality. And the risk of low cardiorespiratory fitness exceeded the mortality risk of smoking, diabetes, and hypertension. Those of higher levels of fitness are also less likely to get these diseases. And looking at this chart, have less severe symptoms and carry lower viral loads, making you less infectious. With the pandemic and disease looked at, the shortening lifespan of Americans has been attributed in part to so-called deaths of despair. The term refers to the increase in deaths from such causes as suicide, drug use disorders, which are unintentional poisonings, and alcoholic liver disease, which are often connected with economic hardship, depression, and stress. Deaths of despair are by definition slow deaths. Despair is literally the complete loss or absence of hope. Just like the years that it takes to accumulate plaque and blood vessel damage for a heart attack or slowly shifting across the spectrum to metabolic disorder, extinguishing hope is going to take years as evident in depression, drug abuse, and suicide. So what are the major factors that deteriorate hope and build despair? Deaths of despair can affect everyone. In one study found that in Florida, higher levels of income were associated with significantly higher deaths of despair rates in that county. Looking at economic conditions further, higher economic insecurity, which is the possibility of decline in income and socioeconomic position or status, financial reductions, which is a loss of assets and income, and medical care are associated with higher rates of deaths of despair. Occupational hazards, including blue collar jobs like construction, farming, fishing, and forestry works of higher risk for death of despair. Unemployment and being out of labor are key factors for premature despair related mortality. When looking at accidental poisoning, health professionals are two to four times higher and service workers are two to three times higher when compared to managers and administrators. Those with higher mortality rates include medical assistance, nursing, psychiatric, and home health aides, health technologists and technicians, emergency medical technicians, and paramedics. 
Looking at educational levels, it was found that education disparity was more striking for opioid-related deaths than for suicide or alcohol-related deaths. An increase in minimum wage by 10% decreased suicide rates by 2.7% in less educated adults. Financial losses amongst the less educated is a major driver of deaths of despair. Across geographical settings, drug poisoning risks are found to be higher in metropolitan areas, while urban and rural areas had increasing levels of suicide rates. One study found that mining-dependent counties are found to experience the highest despair-related mortality rates. Overall, rural areas have higher despair-related mortality rates, and rural area despair-related mortality inequalities seem to be higher in the southern states than the northern states. Looking at ethnicity slash race, multiple studies focused on non-Hispanic whites, while others did not find a significant difference. More recent studies show African American, white, and Hispanic populations are all experiencing despair earlier and reaching a midlife with despair-related behaviors. That's from 2019, prior to the pandemic. In this study, does despair really kill? A roadmap for an evidence-based answer, I found this potential moderators of pathways charts leading to deaths to despair. Communities, social networks, and people on an individual basis are all affected by deaths to despair. Beginning with economic stagnation, the risk factors for despair increase as jobs decline and economic security declines. The tolls of despair on cognitive, emotional, behavioral, and biological health are presented, followed by the diseases of despair, which eventually lead to the deaths of despair. I like to advocate a certain form of exercise that could offer hope. Yes, exercise does help with mental health, anxiety, and depression. But when the underlying issues are not dealt with, that despair is like an ever-growing shadow and shrouding individuals and blocking out all light. We're going to need more. The systematic policy change that is required to curtail deaths of despair is beyond my expertise as a fitness professional. However, I think most everyone can agree that when the leading presidential candidates are beyond the average life expectancy, we don't have anywhere near the best minds leading us to a better future. Thank you all for watching and remember, become fit for life.